Hello everyone, welcome back and this is where we left off in our previous video and let's get started. So I will be creating, uh, we were inside of this bootstrapper.ts by the way just in case you don't remember, we were inside of this bootstrapper.ts file and right here we'll be creating a few variables by the way. It's going to be a private app, uh, so this is uh, TypeScript syntax just in case you don't know. But I expect that you already are familiar with TypeScript right now. So we'll also be creating a uh, another variable. I think we don't need it right now. Uh, I will be telling you in another video when we are connecting our database to this. Uh, I'll be showing you how you can do that, but for now we don't need it. So let's create a new constructor and it's going to take in private port. That's going to be a string. Uh, by the way, it can also be a number just in case. Uh, I will tell you why it is that way. We're also going to be accepting a lot of things here and that's going to be private. And let me just remove that. It's going to be private middlewares now trust me it's going to be really fun implementing this stuff it's going to be really amazing so hang on with it and we need one more thing here that's going to be controllers since we'll be using classes to do that so i'm going to be doing private controllers controllers and that's also going to be any uh, by the way just in case if you're wondering why are we using any since because the these controllers and all these middlewares don't return a definite type that's the only reason we're using any Okay, so let's just do a this.app is equal to express and let's just import express by the way. So to import express simply do a, oh, it's already imported. Let's just import it directly from here. And that should do the job. Okay, so now we initialized our app. We also need to do a this.port is equal to port. That's going to be the port that's going to be supplied in by the user. And then we'll be creating a comment here just in case if you don't want to do that but I prefer like doing it that way and we'll be creating an init now init actually doesn't mean it's a function but uh, I'm just commenting it just in case to let you know that we're going to be initializing everything here so uh, before we initialize everything let's start off and create our methods that's going to be fired up like one after the other so first of all let's configure the middlewares so it's going to be really fun to port in the middleware since all you have to do is just to like create uh, like create this class and just provide the middlewares as an array and that should take care of everything since it's going to be the implementation of the class to do all that so we'll be creating private setup middleware uh why are we like actually calling these private since we don't want all these to be accessed outside the class and outside of the variable that we originally will be creating for like by, by that i mean the instance so let's just create a middlewares so that's going to be setup middlewares and it's going to take a uh, middlewares array that's going to be of any type that's going to be passing from the top and let's simply do a middlewares array dot for each and for each we get a middleware and let's simply do a this dot app dot use since that is how you plug in middlewares into an app express application so let's just do a middleware, middleware, and that should do the job. So that is setting up the middleware and let's add it to the init function and let's do a setup middlewares and that should be immediately fire post we're doing that. Now this also takes in uh, middleware, so don't forget that. So we'll be passing in middlewares in there. So that set up the middleware and now comes the second important part. Uh, right now I'm not gonna be setting up route since that's gonna be the literally the hardest part for this, but let's just go ahead and configure the other parts that we have before we get into the most hard part. So I'm going to be creating another private method that's going to be private configure assets. So this is for that public folder that we created. So let's just do a this.app.use and just do a express.static for initializing static applications and do a path. Now this path is also going to be to be imported and let's do, oops, I don't know what I pressed but it was really awesome that it transitioned into that. So it's going to be import path from path that does job and do a path dot join j o i n join if i could spell that correctly and do a directory name which is to like which is the current directory name we are and then do a dot dot slash public that should configure the asset make sure that you add to the original class that we have and let's do a configure assets that does the job so now your assets are also configured now then we have other stuff that is the morgan uh, logging since uh, what morgan actually does you can actually check out its npm page all it does is that every single request that you send to your middle like this api it will be logging it like what the request was what the date and everything all that uh, like that is what it does originally so let's just do a private setup logger 
you can call this setup Morgan logger. We'll be setting up Winston just in a second, so hang on, hang for it. So I'm going to be doing if process dot env dot node env equals development. Then we'll be saying that this dot app dot use, and we'll be using Morgan, which I don't think is yeah it can can be imported. Yep, well, that should do the auto import. And let's add the developer logging. So by the way, what just happened was that I just simply imported Morgan. Now, just in case who are people who are facing errors like process is not defined, that means you have not added, where did it go? The types for node, make sure that you add them just in case you were getting that error. Now, do the same stuff. We'll be doing this dot setup logger. Okay, now for the last thing, uh, we'll be creating a new one. So let's just do a public start. This is since this is going to be accessible everywhere. And we're going to be returning, make sure that you return this. Returning this dot app dot listen. Oh my, not length. Listen. And this is going to take in a this dot port, which is going to be assigned from outside. And it's going to take in an error function. And it's going to say log, just for right now, log application is running on port not port <laughs> port this dot port oops now uh, the best thing that I, I like the good practice is to not to use console log log dot logs randomly everywhere in your project it's better to use a third party or a better logger that you can implement so we'll be doing that okay so before we head anywhere. I don't know why is it swing that way, but it should be using middleware. Yet it is indeed using middleware. So uh, let's just create a new file or to be honest, a new folder. Uh, let's call it something like um, I will be calling it lib lib and let's call create a new file. Let's call it logger.ts. Right. It's not going to be some super complicated stuff. Trust me. So first of all, I will be going through with imports. Let's import, import, import format and it is not coming okay it's i need to import it separately let's do a create logger we also need that and we'll be using transports and we'll be importing that from winston yep just like that we'll also be destructuring quite a lot of stuff from here and let's call it time stamp combine will be restructuring PRI and T print F and errors errors from format. We'll be creating a new function. Let's call it logger. And let's just do a const log format. We need to create a new format for our logger that will be using a timestamp and all that. Let's just do a print F. Uh, that's going to be destructuring level a message a timestamp and stack and it's going to be returning i bet it's going to be returning to that in the sort of the like this and i'm going to be doing timestamp i will be showing you what what this actually does and then we'll be doing in a level and then we'll be doing like this and we'll say stack if there's a stack available or else just simply push out the message. That means if there's a stack available, if we're supplying it with a stack, then only do that. Other than that, no need to do that. However, uh, there's a bit of thing that we need to do here, just in case you don't know. So this timestamp might be picked up from here. So we will be, uh, I think yes, it won't trouble us. Let's just create a logger. Let's just do a re return. We'll do a create logger that we're importing from top. And we'll do a format. Oops. Format, it's gonna be combine. That's going to take in uh, formats how we were doing that and we'll be doing a format dot colorize to just to see the good color out there and we'll be doing a timestamp and that's going to take in uh, a format for this and I will be supplying it a format of ear 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 wait that's going to be a string ear 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 month month date date hh for hours mm for minutes and ss for seconds that does the job let's also log the errors that we have and make sure that the stack is true. Oops. 
to that every single time it assembles this track as well and then we'll be using the lock format uh, press enter here and we'll be doing a transport and the best thing about this logger is that you can actually log it to your uh, to a certain file as well since if you're using it on production environment for this we'll be using console that is it now let's just export default logger and i'll be creating an object out of that so uh by the way just in case you don't want to know how, if you want to know how you can use this logger simply import it anywhere you want just simply do a import logger from logger and instead of this console.log, let's just log a logger.info. That does the job. And this is going to be your logger working out for you. Now, this thing on itself won't do anything since uh, we have not created anything out yet. So let's just go ahead and create a simple app.ts file and like just configure this thing up. So I will be creating a new app.ts file here. I need to add one more thing. Uh, just go to ba back to your package.json file and right here where, you, where it might have already added index.js for you, make sure that it's app.js. That's gonna be the default entry point that we have. So let's just, first of all, we need to configure uh, one more thing that uh, let's just create a dot env, env dot development. That's gonna be the uh, environment file for development. Uh, make sure that you have also ignored these files. These files are not to be provided into your repos. Uh, by the way, this is why we're using cross origin because we'll be providing node environment out of the box. So we'll be using some sort of stuff to load these files important. Now, why these files are important, I guess you already know because you need environment variables, right? So let's just import .env. dot env from dot env and let's start by configuring it let's just say dot env dot config uh, by the way we need to import path i guess also no 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 we don't need to do that now let's do a path and make a string interpolation and we'll do a process dot cw oops i can't press c yeah, this is for a current working directory, which is gonna be this directory right now where we are in, and we'll be doing dot. Now, this current working directory actually means the root itself. So we're right now in this root folder and the environment file is right here, where did it go? In the root folder itself. And we'll be doing dot env. And right here, what we can do is to say process dot env dot node n. And that, if so, for example, if you're creating, uh, if you're running on staging environment or production, you can simply do a dot dot env dot production and that should load this file as well this is what it this this thing actually does so i also like uh, to add comments load the envs based on current node env all right now let's define a new port and this is where the main stuff comes in and we'll do not dot env dot port now this environmental variable is generally assigned by wherever you host this, but we'll be assigning it right here. Let's go to our uh, development environment and create a new port variable and it's assigned at like 5,000 or something. Now, uh, this will do the stuff for us. Now let's create a new application using our bootstrapper. Do a const app is equal to new express application auto import. Thanks TypeScript. We'll be passing in the port and then we'll be passing an array for our middleware. So remember that we'll be passing in controllers array as well and let's save it. Now, right here, uh, we'll be passing in a few of the, now this is where the most important and the most fun part about it is that, for example, if you're using a normal uh, Express application, you'll do app.use and all that stuff. However, you don't need to do that here since everything is pre-configured for you. You just need to pass in middleware here. We'll be passing in Express, by the way, we need to import Express as well. So let's just import Express from Express. All right, so let's just do a parser. However, uh, by the way, just in case you don't know, you, you don't need to install body parser. Express now provides this out of the box for you. So let's just create a limit for it. I generally like to keep the limit at 10 kilobytes. Really, man, I hate when it does this. All right, let's just do a express.url encode it. We need to, because we need to get the real encryption as well. Oops, did something happen? Yeah, I forgot the comma. We'll be setting extended to be true. Same here, we'll be setting limit to be 10 kilobytes. 
save that that should do the job for you now comes the most important part let's just do a const server which is going to be app.start the best part about this is that this will automatically pick up what the server is you can see server is a server this application type actually comes from uh, express itself which is a thing defined in express so which is really good because you're not getting type inference that you need so just in case if you want to know what this thing is capable of you can actually handle for example sicktone so let's just do a handle sicktone and let's do a process dot on and remember we're listening for sicktone sicktone actually means uh, if we're like uh, like doing a termination part where why doesn't it show to me like that one no, I really want to see. So these are the things that are available. We'll be doing a sick term here. So now this is this time I'm going to type in it. You can see sick term. We'll be creating a new one. Let's just create a new uh, sort of. So by the way, I'm creating a new that function. What do we call it? Anonymous function. We'll be importing logger here, automatically imported, and we'll be using warn, not log or info. And I'll be saying sick term. Rather now, I'm keeping it all caps. Received. Oops. Yeah, and then we'll be doing server dot close. By the way, this is like gracefully closing your server. Like whenever you do this, if your server is new and you press Control plus C, that's not graceful. That's that's like everything that's connected suddenly gets disconnected. That that's what you you're not supposed to do. So we'll be doing a logger dot warn, and let's just say process terminated. Tada! That handles the system, and this is where this logger and this application still comes into play. Let's try this. Uh, let's go into our package.json file. Just check one thing. Uh, okay. Let's just try rimraf. So I bet this won't work. And let's do a clean. And we'll be running rimraf. Remember, rimraf was installed. Just in case you haven't installed it, make sure that you have it. And we'll be just doing dot slash dist. Ta da. That does the job for us. And now watch what happens. If I do a yarn clean, gone. Now let's do a TSC to check if everything is compiling pretty much correctly. I think everything should be compiling by the way. So let's just do a yarn start dev and that should start our server. Okay, now we're getting that uh, cannot read config of undefined, which I guess is somewhere here. Wait, where did we have to go? No, it was an app.ts. And it says the dot env is undefined. And let's just see why. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense. Now, okay, that should run. However, if you're still getting that error, make sure that you go back to your tsconfig.json file because we messed something up. And just replace it with the file that I gave you. It should do the job. Now, by the way, what did I add? It was, I think I removed the ES module interrupt. I think that should do the job for you as well. <laughs> so let's go back. And now we have our application running. And as you can see that the logger is uh, working as well. So let's just go back to our bootstrapper.ts TS file and this is where we're going to be setting up our routes. That means the controllers I mean here. And that is for another video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure that you join me on the next.